And they all turn to me and they're like, those were dealers and that's a number to get drugs. So stressful. Hi everyone, I'm Sophie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a, what am I? <laughs> this is gonna take a while. Hi everyone, my name is Sophie. I'm 18 years old and I'm a psychology student at Durham University. I wanted to start this channel back up since I've got so many positive responses on so many positive responses from my other videos so your wish is my command I'm back for those who don't know I was previously a law student at Durham University but I soon came to realize that law school and I weren't very good friends so I decided to switch to psychology but that was not nearly as easy as I expected it to be I was told that it was very easy to switch subjects in case you didn't like the subject that you were studying but because of covid everything was a lot more complicated i don't know what is wrong with me after i started studying law i realized that i was more drawn to science subjects i was a lot more passionate about psychology and medicine in general than law which there's nothing wrong with i just kind of realized it a little bit too late i had to defer my application from durham and reapply for psychology, which is not usually the process, but because of COVID and oversubscription of all the subjects, that's what I had to do. So here I am in my gap year filming a video for you. <laughs> Today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about Durham, how I got into Durham, what my offer was, um, my experiences at Durham for the first term at least. I'm filming this video for students who are currently thinking about applying to Durham University or those who have already applied to Durham and want to know a little bit more about it. My sister just came in and gave me some lip balm. I don't know why. So let's start with the questions. I have them on my iPad. I feel super professional. The question is, what was your offer? So I applied for LLB Law and since I already had an A-level in the bag, which was my Russian A-level, I had an A-star in that. So the offer was AB. Wasn't too difficult, not gonna lie. What college were you allocated to? I was allocated to St. Chad's and St. Chad's was my preference, so I don't have any complaints about that. But this year, I decided to kind of experiment a little bit with it, so I applied to Hatfield. Why not, you know? Um, and a lot of people do tell me I give off really strong Hatfield vibes, and I don't know whether that's a compliment or if that's meant to be offensive, but I'll talk a lot more about colleges and their stereotypes in another video because that's quite an interesting topic. A lot of people ask me how college allocation works. The truth is, it just kind of happens. You don't really have to do anything about it. So the thing is with Durham is that you can apply for an open application where the university chooses what college you should go to. It's kind of a more random. Yeah, so if you have an open application, you can get allocated basically anywhere. It just means that you don't have a preference, but others, they prefer to have a preference. I didn't do a lot of research to be completely fair because I was quite, I was quite restricted for time. I I think I only sent my application out to unis on about the 5th or the 6th of January last year and the deadline was the 15th so I was really really like close to that deadline which is really stressful. The thing is I did have my application ready from ages before it's just my school took a long time to process that application and like sign all the papers and make and write all the references which is really stressful. I hate relying on other people in terms of things like that. That's why I could never work in groups. We're not gonna talk about that. Um, Durham really misses me. I miss Durham, Durham misses me, it's mutual. So I also wanted to talk to you guys about college parents and the whole traditions thing within Durham. A lot of people don't really know about college parents or what I'm even talking about right now. But when you are a fresher at Durham, you get allocated college parents are in the year above you. Their um, purpose is to make sure that you've settled in properly and to kind of give you that support in case you need it, any help. Or if you're just feeling really homesick, that's kind of their purpose is to comfort you in a way, to make you feel like you still have people there who are taking care of you. Something else that Durham is known for is their formals. Formals is probably one of my favorite parts about Durham. Um, because you get to dress up really fancy and show off a bit. Um, I personally brought like seven or eight different dresses, different heels, so many different combinations and because of Covid we only ended up having like two formals and I don't think we even bothered going to the last one or maybe we did but we weren't really that bothered to dress up. It was really really cold outside. So I grew up in Cyprus where it's really really hot so five degrees, one degree, 
not really my thing but I have got to say that I did get used to the cold weather after a little while so if you're also like me and you're from hot climate then don't worry you'll get used to it it took me a little while but you'll get used to it don't worry someone asked what did you like most about Durham everything I loved everything about Durham the people I loved the college system the traditions just how small it was as well because I'm the kind of person who gets lost so easily um, so when I lived in Cyprus Cyprus is a tiny island I lived in Limassol and Limassol is quite a small city as well compared to other cities in the world of course and I got lost so many times I forgot what side of me the sea was but in Durham I never got lost once I was actually so surprised that I never got lost but in Durham it's really really easy to find where you are because everything kind of is distinctive so you remember certain landmarks if you like so I usually remember like the corner shop I call it a kiosk but in England people swear that it's called a corner shop and I do not understand why you guys call it a corner shop it's a kiosk the kiosk I remember the kiosk um, down the road and right opposite that is I call it Chad's bridge it's not it's not St Chad's bridge it's actually the student union bridge people usually know it as like the student union bridge I call it Chad's bridge just because it's right next to St Chad's college this is why I hate filming at home when there's people around because people just kind of walk into your room I'm really 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 shy I don't look it I really don't I look really narcissistic and obnoxious but I'm really shy so do you have any negative experiences from Durham no I mean I okay I did have one negative experience from Durham and that was when I was leaving and that's only because it was so difficult to get hold of anyone and I was trying to contact people for about two weeks and it almost felt like my emails were getting ignored, my calls were getting ignored, I was getting ignored in general and um, it wasn't a great time for me because I didn't want to leave Durham, it was kind of something that I had to do and now we're Gucci, we're absolutely Gucci now. Um, there's also I wouldn't call this a negative experience at all, in fact it's quite, it's quite a good experience for me but um, some people might find this a little bit scary so one night after Chad's bar um, I was walking with some girls from my household we were walking back to our accommodation for those who don't know I was 20 minutes away from the Bailey because of how oversubscribed the uni was anyways um, we were walking back and we meet two people who kind of stop us and they decide to have a chat, two guys. Um, they looked a bit dodgy, but I guess I'd had a little bit to drink and I didn't really, I didn't want to judge them. And then at the very end of the conversation, a very nice five minute conversation, they gave us all little lighters. I don't have it with me now, it's in my dad's office, but it's my Durham lighter with phone numbers on it. And the last thing they said was, if you need anything, give us a call. I go, thank you, bye. And um, I turn around to my friends and I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. It's an anxiety hotline in case you're feeling lonely. And they all turn to me and they're like, those were dealers and that's a number to get drugs. Um, this just goes to show just how naive I was at the time. I thought it was a, I thought it was a helpline. So going back to the more academic questions, what is a step up like from A-level? Really not that bad. It's actually easier. Well, okay. I'm getting a little too confident. The workload was a lot easier to handle at uni than it was during A-levels. Saying that, I took five A-levels, so I wasn't really helping myself out there. Studying one subject is definitely a lot easier than studying lots of different types of subjects. I studied English language, history, psychology, Russian, and art, and now I'm taking A-level bio just because I want a gap year and I need to study or else I go insane. The step up from GCSE to A-level is a lot bigger than the step up from A-level to uni, so if that makes you feel more comfortable, just remember that. That's something that I always remembered and it's true. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You're, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Are the teachers supportive or do they leave you to do everything independently? Um, they're supportive and they leave you to do everything independently. I think for us it was a lot different in terms of support because we were all online. So usually you can walk straight into a lecturer's office and ask them questions as long as it's their office hours, they're in the office, you just knock and go in. But because of COVID we had to book an appointment with them, either that or we had to email them to book a slot on Zoom. But yeah, most of the time just just kind of keep in mind that in uni you're not going to be 
spoon-fed anything. Typically at uni, they do expect you to kind of be a lot more independent. So my favorite question, the prestige associated to Durham University. Um, a lot of people contacted me worried about the stereotype associated to Durham. So the fact that there were a lot more kind of private school kids at Durham than there were public school. I wouldn't say that that's necessarily true. I'm personally from a private school, so I know I can't really talk as a person from the perspective of a public school child at Durham, but all I can say is I never ever noticed any discrimination, any criticism, um, or any remarks about public school kids. Especially in my household, we were all so like, accepting of each other that it had nothing really to do with our education. We didn't really care about what school, what type of school people went to, if you know what I mean. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Of course, you're gonna get some stuck up people who think that they're better than everyone else. Um, have you always wanted to go to Durham Uni? No, I haven't always wanted to go. Ow, my knees are killing me right now. No, I haven't always wanted to go to Durham Uni. In fact, I thought I was going to go to Exeter University from a very young age. I, from a very young age, I really wanted to go to Exeter University and I thought that that's where I was going to be 100%. I think I only really realized that I wanted to go to Durham, not even go to Durham, but give it a try. I'm just very stubborn. I just thought if I don't try it, I'm going to regret not trying it. So I tried it and it was the best decision I'd ever made in my life. The minute I came to Durham, I realized that I really, really wanted to be there and I did not want to leave. The answer to that question is no, I actually only realized that I really wanted to be there when I got there. When I got there, I was like, this is where I want to be, I love this place so much. For those of you who are applying to Durham or have applied to Durham and gotten an offer, I do wish you good luck and I really hope to see you in Durham in 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, support my channel because I'm back. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here because I'm going to be uploading videos quite often and they're all going to be about Durham. So if you're applying to Durham, or thinking about Durham or got an offer from Durham or you're already at Durham and you just want to see what I'm up to, then don't forget to subscribe. I don't really know how to end videos so I just kind of, I hate intros and outros.